Laura Ingram thinks that you have minority privilege if you call out people for having white privilege. Um, it all started with a tweet sent out by Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez. You ever heard of her? Yes, you have. Uh, she tweeted this. Let's learn about this, shall we? Many have recognized that Fox News has crossed the line beyond conservatism and into outright bigotry with their financing of Tucker Carlson and Laura Ingram. Tucker finances the Daily Caller, which posted fake nudes of me. That's true. Um, and it was gross that they did that. Um, here's a breakdown, and she tweeted that. But basically, calling out Fox for financing what are at least two examples of people who cater to white supremacist audiences, and it's clear as day. Um, it is so thinly veiled that you just see it, uh, see right through it. So here she is on her podcast explaining her position on what AOC had said. So when you can't debate a point, you throw back white privilege you can't understand, and then there's nowhere for that person to go. You shut down debate. Alexandra Ocasio-Cortez is trying that little trick on Tucker Carlson and me. She's out there saying it's amazing that, that people like this, I'm paraphrasing in Twitter, people like this can even make a living. These racists at Fox. Oh, really? You don't know me. Don't judge me. My authentic self has a right to speak and exist and make a living just like your quote authentic self, whatever that is, progressive, Marxist, socialist, whatever you want to call it. Like whatever you want to call it. Yeah, right. Um, but that's, here's the thing. First of all, if you, like if an actor or an actress says, you don't know me, that's one thing. But Laura Ingram is on her show and Fox for a grand total of like 60 hours a day. Yeah, we know you. Talking about her, her feelings on stuff. And you learn a lot from yeah, that. Yeah. yeah. Um, Biatch, we know you. Yeah. yeah. And it's like you're talking nonstop. And you have to choose either like, I take you at face value for whatever you say, which is one thing, and judging by what you choose to cover and what you talk about, that is a white supremacist instinct you're catering to. Um, in terms of knowing you personally, however, uh, I will say that is kind of true because I frequently get you mixed up with Ann Coulter. And I don't know which is which, <laughs> period, half the time. Um, but that's, with her, it's it's just very frustrating. No, and I think you really actually make the key point, which is uh, that's not a fair comeback because she is so out there, Laura Ingram, with her views. So at least when it comes to racism and white privilege and uh, her discussion around issues that involve minorities and civil rights, I mean, all of that stuff's out there night after night after night. So there's really not a, lo a lot to that argument, you don't know me. I mean, it's true, we don't know you know you, but we know what you say and, and your rhetoric would reflect what uh, AOC is saying. I as a racial minority myself, I will say I enjoy the minority privilege of not making as much money as white people do <laughs> or having as many rights as y'all do. I, I, I mean, I am basking in my minority privilege, <laughs> let me tell you. <laughs> I love it. Yeah, it's like, uh, what are you talking about? Right, and it's in, the last part of knowing her or not knowing her is like either I take you at face value for what you choose or what you have done is crafted a fake image to make money off of white supremacy and in doing so reinforce the instincts of people who watch you because they are white supremacists. And if you can sleep with yourself at night, go ahead and do it. But it, it sounds absolutely disgusting to me. Also, the minority privilege argument just on the merits just doesn't hold water. I mean, I just don't understand. Show me where there's minority privilege. I just don't see it. Now you could, yeah, I guess you could segue to some uh, affirmative action argument or something along those lines. But I think uh, apart from that, I think you're on thin ice the whole time. But minority privilege, come on. I mean, it's sort of to your point, which you make comically, which is, look, it's a it's a white man's game in this country. And the idea somehow that there's minority privilege. And then she goes right into like the ad hominem attacks and the labels, just throwing every label up to see which one does the most damage. It, it just, I'm sorry, it, it holds no water whatsoever. There's more where she talks about f victimhood mentality and then actually mentions this minority privilege concept. Let's take a listen. But you see, they're so eager to take away the rights of other people as they claim to be the most tolerant people on the face of the planet, white privilege. How about the privilege of, of being a protected member of a class that you can never criticize lest you be called racist? That's privilege. I think Victor Davis Hanson called it minority privilege in, in his piece that he just wrote. That the people who are the most protected are the people who are the first to say white privilege because then you can't ever criticize them again. So what is this victim? What is this victimhood 
mentality do to us as a country. If the worst thing that happens to you when you're white is that you get called a racist, I'll trade ya. <laughs> I will trade you. I will trade you black people getting shot in the streets and 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 me like being called a chink for no reason for for you getting called a racist Laura Ingram. Let's I'll trade ya. Any day of the week. Let's do this. Right. I mean, if this is the worst thing that's happening to you, come bring it. Lady. She, she's getting mad at people for like just saying like a term that identifies something that is real. Like Call, it is real. Calling out like horrible behavior, if that's the worst thing that's gonna happen to you. Biatch, please. If she's gonna call out people for having like a, a short phrase that gives them the rhetorical upper hand immediately, these are the people who came up with the term death, death tax, you know, and defense of marriage. When really there, it was the estate tax, and it was, you know, I'm against gay marriage. That is the thing that Republicans do all the time. They come up with these little catchphrases that are essentially get out of jail free cards. And those usually apply to things that, when you look at it, equate to punching down. And in this situation, this is just saying white privilege is just saying how things are. And yes, there are people, I'm sure there's people with any term that use it in a weird, she points out on her show that someone, there was a black caller who told the host of a radio show that he had white privilege, not knowing that that host was black. That was a misguided thing. And maybe in the sense of what he was saying, that sounded like something that someone with white privilege might say. But in the vast majority of instances, the same with the term toxic masculinity, you're fighting against something because it makes you feel uncomfortable. And the reason it makes you feel uncomfortable is because it implies you might have to give up some of this extra power you have because what you have is an asymmetrical power structure. And this is just having people get uncomfortable when asked to do that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And rather than just look at what the term means. And once you do that, you'll realize it's not attacking you as a person, it's just trying to make the world better. Well, if you look at the levers of power in Washington right now, I mean, it's all older white men who are running everything and with a with a I mean it really is the case this last election you look at his cabinet you look at it, this administration it's just full of white guys of privilege I mean and 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 jillionaires to boot so finally some uh, faces of color are showing up and you're hearing them say things that are fairly authentic I mean I say fairly I meaning they they are they have authenticity but they're fairly different than what you're used to hearing. And I think that's provoking this sort of response and reaction. Two easy ways to follow Young Turks. One is hit the subscribe button down below, uh, then you're a TYT subscriber. And second is ring the bell. And when you do that on YouTube, you're notified of our videos.